Hello there everyone, Robin Nichols here with another Photoshop Elements tip for you. Today I'm going to show you all about the process multiple files function and uh, this is uh, I suppose initially a little bit scary to look at um, and it's possibly a reason uh, for a lot of people just skipping it because it is a little bit busy on screen. Let's have a look at it. So if we go to the file menu we choose process multiple files and so this big great big window appears and you go whoop, whoop, that does look a bit on the scary side I'm not sure if I want to get into that. So first off what does it do? Well as the name suggests we use it for processing multiple files. Funny that. And the idea being for example you may have shot a whole bunch of pictures one weekend and you think well I'm just going to send 20 away uh, to a friend mine uh, but of course in Photoshop Elements that's a bit tricky you've got to go through 20 pictures well first off you've got to select them but then you've got to go through them you've got to open them reduce them using the image size dialog box you sort of save it put it into a different folder maybe rename it and then close it down go and open a second picture and so on and so forth so it's a bit tedious Photoshop Elements is really developed for using single shots you open a picture fix it close it open a second picture fix it close it so on and so forth it's not a mass production tool uh -huh, unless you use this tool here. So the most important thing I think to get right in your heads is number one is let's say you've got 50 pictures and I went to an Elvis um, weekend recently earlier on in the year which is great fun and fantastic for photography of course with all these Elvis impersonators wandering around the town um, and I took loads and loads of photos so let's say I need to reduce the size of those most of the shots that I took on that weekend were of course raw files and uh, here, here are raw files whoops uh, here are my raw files and of course there's dozens and dozens of them so it's a real hassle I've not only got to open them up but I've got to deal with the uh, raw converter engine as well which is a little bit complicated so this tool is going to help me out I put 40 or so pictures into a folder called Elvis and uh, you set the source you know literally by clicking on browse and this will take you into the uh, folder hierarchy and you just choose the folder click it and go okay the second most important actually probably the most important thing is the second uh, little window here have a separate folder somewhere on your desktop and it doesn't have to be anywhere near in this case the Q drive it can be on your desktop it can be in your pictures folder you can stick it anywhere you like an empty folder give it another name different to the original so I've got Elvis is the source file and I've got Elvis lives as my destination file so I know that it's going to copy all the pictures out of the Elvis file it doesn't delete them it just copies them it just opens them and then puts them somewhere else so my Elvis originals will always remain in the Elvis folder there the newly processed and hopefully nicely reduced in size pictures will be in the Elvis lives folder so we get those two sorted out straight away we can then move down uh, to the file naming uh, area here and as you can see here I'm now calling my files <laughs> Elvis lives uh, but of course you don't want every file to be called Elvis Lives because that's going to cause awful problems because if you've got 40 pictures and they're all called Elvis Lives you're going to have a few issues so we need to choose from the right hand side uh, a way of displaying that and you can choose you know obviously a two digit serial number or what have you so that it's now going to be called Elvis Lives 01, Elvis Lives 02 and so on and so forth so great for batch renaming uh, if you're into uh, you know giving your uh, your files your photography uh, proper names moving on down the side now this is the most important thing this is the reason we're here it's to resize the images and so we obviously check the resize images box now typically we you know we'd have it in inches or centimeters or what have you or pixels and we would type in RG oh, we so you know I want them about 800 wide but of course all your photos here and, and I know for sure that some of my pictures are portrait orientation and some are landscape so if I set my uh, resize image to anything like pixels inches centimeters or millimeters I'm going to be in trouble because it's going to fix up say the horizontal pictures but it's going to make weird proportions out of the vertical pictures because it doesn't chop and change it applies the same change to all pictures regardless if they're standing up or lying down you know portrait or landscape so what we do here as you can see I choose percentage now I'm shooting a 21 megapixel camera so I'm going to set it down to about 20 percent so most of you are using 16 18 20 megapixel images are going to be very happy with the size and the quality you get at about 20 to 25 percent best thing is to try it but 20 percent is a good starting point now what about the resolution well I'm going to reduce them in size and I'm going to email them so I'm thinking you know maybe only 150 pixels or dots per inch you don't need print resolution which is 300 dots per inch okay uh, do make sure though another important point here make sure that constrained proportions is checkmarked there because if it if it ain't you're going to be in trouble 
um, and because you're going to get 20% wide, but the original height will remain. So they're going to be um, something in the region of 700 pixels wide by 4,500 pixels high. So they're going to look a bit weird. Um, finally, and again, this is because I am going to email them. Um, I really want JPEGs because uh, JPEGs are very, uh, very convenient. And of course, they compress a little bit. So you can choose low, medium, high, or max quality. I think I'm going to go with high quality. But as you can see here, if you wanted to another stage, for example, convert all your raw files to Photoshop files or down the bottom here, just off the screen. Let's just shove that up the screen a little bit. You can convert them to TIFF files as well. So you've got the whole range of file formats you could convert them to. So I'm going to choose high quality. You know, it's not the highest quality, but it's a, a little bit more compression. Surprise, surprise. In the upper right quadrant here, I can choose quick fixing. So I'm going to apply auto contrast just because I can. Um, and we have auto levels and, of course, auto color and sharpening as well. Let's maybe apply a little bit of sharpening here. This is such a cool feature. What's the difference between auto levels and auto contrast, I hear you ask? Well, auto levels will bump up or hopefully improve the contrast, but it may also shift the color. If we just use auto contrast, it just deals with the contrast, doesn't touch your color. And, of course, auto color fixes the color without touching the contrast. And finally, sharpening, well, it just makes the pictures appear a little bit crisper. Now, these are very generic features, so don't be surprised if a couple of the pictures, if they're a little bit edgy, you know, and the exposure's a little bit over or under, you may find that they actually stuff the result up completely. You go, yeah, that's a bit of a shame. Because, of course, you're trying to add a generic change or improvement to a range of different exposures and the different shots. So don't expect miracles, but, you know, in general, it works quite nicely. Now, we also have this amazing feature. I can apply a caption or even a watermark, and I could put custom text, put my name in there, like this, um, especially if I correct, spelled it correctly, uh, and I can actually have this embedded into the file. So again, I suppose a little bit handy if you want to send some stuff to a potential uh, client, you know, maybe a magazine or a publication of some sort, um, and you want to just make sure that they know that these low resolution pictures are actually yours. So you can, let's put them in bottom left or bottom right, let's put them in the bottom right, bottom left rather, I'm gonna choose Verdana 12 point opacity, and I'm gonna use something like just a, you know, ready pinky color. Okay, and we're going to set them down to, I don't know, 20%. But I'm going to make it quite big, you know, just so it's very, very blatant. You can see exactly what I'm doing. So you can choose to have none of these other than just resizing. So you don't need to rename, you don't need to quick fix or add labels. Or you can have all of them. So this is the power. So it's a systematic working your way down from the source to the destination and then checking these boxes until we've finished and when you're happy with that you can click OK. One other feature here is it says log errors that result from processing files. So I guess um, if you check this you actually have like a printout as if anything goes wrong um, but generally it doesn't go wrong. Key things about this before I click the OK button is to make sure your source folder and your destination folder are separate. So I click the OK button and uh, the magic flying pizza of death happens. Oh, there we go. First, there's my Elvis impersonator. Uh, she's called Shelvis. Um, and just to prove what's happening, if I just move the empty folder in front of you, you can see here um, that's exactly what it's doing. It's just beginning to fill up uh, with these uh, amazing conversions. So not only has uh, she been opened, reduced in size, uh, but we should have a little bit of a watermark in there as well, plus um, sharpening and an auto level. So what I'll do is I'm just going to stop the process so that we can actually see what's going on. You can stop the process simply by pressing escape if you want to do that. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop it completely and I'm going to open this Shelvis picture up and we'll have a look and see what's happening here. So there you can see my watermark, my name, Robin Nichols, has just appeared at the bottom. That's pretty good. She was she was pretty good impersonator, I have to say. <laughs> um, so there's my watermark that I put in there. Remember, I put in it at about 30% opacity, so it's very, very faint. It doesn't damage the picture. The actual file is 2.53 megabytes. Okay, um, if I go back into my folder so far, and we have a look at the properties, because it's a JPEG, it squashes down to 190 kilobytes. So as I say, you could probably send 20 or 25 or even 30 all in one email uh, for people to have a look. So there it is. That's the process multiple files function. I think it's absolutely fantastic. It's an unsung hero in this program because it allows you to get on and do heaps of stuff to your pictures very, very quickly. And as I said, because it's a multiple file, it's a batch processing tool, it'll allow you to process 5, 
50 or even 500 photos. All you need to do is then go off and boil the kettle, have a, have a little bit of a sit down uh, while it does it. It is very, very fast and very, very efficient. Enjoy.